Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to add fine liner and water to your Birmingham ball drawing uh, using a technique ink and water or pen and water. So what you can see I've got here is a pencil drawn out of the ball using the grid scale method um, and as you can see what I'm doing very gradually is I'm paying lots of attention to the photograph more than my paper and what I'm doing is I'm just adding fine liner to begin with set tiny section by section on areas that I can see shade. Now I've got a tiny bit of water and again I'm only working in small sections at a time because what you don't want to happen is for the pen to dry and then you can't move it around or for the water to dry um, and I can't work back into it within a few few um, seconds of time. So as you can see with the paintbrush, I've made sure I haven't overloaded my paintbrush with water. Again, you can always uh, make areas darker, but once you've got ink and water on there, you can't make them lighter. So always start with those really um, light tones. And where there are highlights on your image, leave those completely white. At the very end, if we need to come back and add a little bit of water over them, with just a tiny bit of ink on our brush, we can do. But this technique simply is using fine liner as paint, if you like, or as ink, because that's what it is. But by adding the water, um, we can move it around and use it more as a paint. So you can see I've left areas of highlights completely white with no ink or no water. And I'm just, again, my main focus is on the photograph, not on my drawing. And I'm just looking to either add shade with um, the fine liner or add outlines of shade, if that makes sense. So where I can see I'm going to add a lot of shade under that one leg quite soon, if you look on, on the right hand side, um, I'll be putting in quite a lot of pen there. But again, I've said it and I'll say it again, you can always take away, um, you can, sorry, you can always add water to ink to make it darker, but you can't take it away. Once it's done, it's on there. So always start with tiny bits of pen and tiny bits of water, and you can build it up really gradually. Now the technique you can see, I'm just using the tip of the brush and I'm working over those lines. If I overload my brush with too much water, the water will run, there'll be too much water and the image will flood, if that makes sense. So tiny bits of water, making sure you're getting rid of the excess before you put the brush onto paper. And every time I touch a bit of pen, it turns it to a runny ink, so less water the better. What I can do is once I've got some ink loaded on my brush from touching where I've put pen, I can then, and I'm doing it now if you, if you look, I'm then moving that brush to areas where it needs to be a bit darker. So I'm almost stealing ink from one area and adding it to another. Now if I had a pound for every time a student said, I'm no good at this technique, um, it, does, it doesn't look very good. I always say to them that this technique, more than any other, and you'll see during this demo video, is all about taking your time. Never add water or ink to an already wet area because your paper will start to bubble and rip um, and you won't get the desired effect all sorts of strange things happen and that's one of the key key reasons why we only do a tiny section at a time so while we're waiting for one area to dry like i am there on the right hand side i can move on to another area and do the same during this video i do stop completely to let it all dry and what that allows me to do is to go back in and add some final touches but we can see that in in a short while Okay, so you may have noticed that I've speeded the video up a little bit now. 
um, that's because we'll be here all day if, if I hadn't have. Uh, what you can see I'm doing with the fine liner is when it comes to the face there is obviously a lot more detail um, there around the ears, you can see around the eyes, around the horns on top of his head, around his mouth area and if you look at the photograph they are quite prominent and defined so I can afford to use the fine liner in a way to add more detail at this point. I've really got those eyes piercing out um, around the ears as well and I can really add quite a lot of fine liner in those really dark areas around the horns and around the ears and you can see again I'm just I'm just moving it around moving that ink around paying lots of attention to begin with on those um, on those dark areas In a couple of seconds time you'll notice that the screen will switch and that's an indication that I gave the drawing some drying time. That's really important to do because during that drying time everything will set and then what that does when you're happy when you're happy with your light and medium tones when it's all dry you can go back in and really add those real dark tones. Um, the darkest tones if you like and some final scratchy detail which always looks good. As you can see that lovely scratchy detail I'm adding. Some people like that scratchy effect, some people don't so it's personal preference and this is all about developing your own technique. Um, I've seen versions of this that have got high grades um, that haven't got that scratchy effect it's a lot lighter and a lot more fluid with how they apply the water to the pen but personal choice I quite like that it ends up looking quite scratchy and rustic slow the video down again now and I'm putting in those final areas Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that tutorial and here's the finished article. Good luck!